Hello, my name is Anne, and today let's do a full review of Octogen OS for the Xiaomi Redmi Note 5 Pro. Now, this ROM has been a very special ROM for me because I've been using this ROM for over two weeks, which is more than I would usually spend on any custom ROM. Um, and you know why in a second, because basically I have so many things to say about this ROM, so I just so, so let's get right into it. All right. So um, in this video, in this review, we're going to divide the uh, review to pros and cons because honestly, there were just so much, so many things about Oxygen OS that you may not even know. So what is Oxygen OS anyway? So Oxygen OS is a custom skin uh, by One by One Plus that they put on their One Plus phones. And uh, it has been longly, like all the way since from scratch, been the best custom skin for any Android phone because of amazing, because of its amazing custom set, feature set, and very smooth user experience. And so, because of that, many people are really attempting to get this ROM on their various phones. And. Um, you got, I, and I, I gotta say that the Note 5 Pro is the most ported Oxygen OS phone I've ever seen. Like, this, right, this phone has at least seven builds of Oxygen OS depending on uh, what phone it is ported from. Right, it's the 5T, the 6, the 6T, and the 7, the 7 Pro, and stuff like that. So the one I'm using here is from the OnePlus 6, and it is based on Android 10. Now of course there are many OnePlus 6 builds, but I use the one um, that's from Forest, and I'll and I'll put that that ROM link down below in the description. Anyway, let's get to the review. So uh, that's some of the things I really like the most about this phone, about this you know this ROM in general. The first has got to be its performance. Pretty much its main shiny point. It is exceptionally smooth, like the, the way the, from uh, scrolling the home screen to opening apps, it's all really smooth. And it's just not because it's of 90 hertz or 120 hertz that you've seen in many uh, modern flagships. This is still a 60 hertz, but I would say, I would argue this is the best 60 hertz experience I've ever seen uh, with this ROM. Now this is also steps true for the Oxygen OS that tested on the Galaxy Q7, right? And it is all because of, of, of one how one plus optimizes the operating system, which is really, really, um, really impressive, I should say. Now aside from just performance or just the overall smoothness, there are a lot of handy features under the hood. Now you know that AOSP custom ROMs like Havoc OS are very feature packed, very customizable in terms of uh, the looks or many different elements of the UI. But the thing that it just can't catch up with OnePlus own skin, it has to be its feature set. Now, um, let's just get started with the home screen. The home screen looks just beautiful. Now, it doesn't have the Google page or the, the modern style pixel search bar at the bottom, but it has a lot of cool features, like the shelf. Now, yes, I may not rank it above Google Now page, but it has a lot of things that I love. For example, you can put widgets, uh, which you might not be able to do on your home screen, or there are a lot of handy OnePlus stuff like the dashboard to monitor all of your uh, phone static, your app suggestions, and like all your stuff like quick notes and stuff is there. And, um, and it also integrates really well with OnePlus own apps, which is really nice. Also, um, there are a lot of hidden uh, software tricks, software tweaks that I really come in handy. For example, um, just little things like the like the handy bill here, the, the the bar on the bottom, the one that uh, enables when you have it to ten. Yeah, the navigation gestures. The pill is really a, a pleasant to actually uh, use it. It's really bouncy, it's, it's longer than the old AOSP custom ROMs uh, navigation pill, so it's, it feels more uh, intuitive and more natural than something like AOSP's gestures. And to be honest, a, a lot of the gestures really feel better with Oxygen OS, like going home or just 
you know, swiping back to the home screen here look, feels really amazing. Now, I've already tell, told you about all the features that uh, Oscar OS has uh, more than something like Havoc OS. So let's, just, so let's list them one by one. First, we have things like Game Space. Game Space is such a joy to use uh, when you want to play games. And a, a company, a company that is the fanatic mode, which really boosts the CPU and GPU performance by a great extent. And that really does uh, come into effect when I play some games on this phone. Brawl Stars, PUBG, and I do note PUBG. I do notice a very substantial up, uh, performance up boost compared to uh, other rounds of testing. And along with that, Geekbench of course, and some other uh, performance elements have also been really nicely enhanced. Take the Geekbench scores as an example. It is far higher than any other ROMs I've tested. Uh, I tested it like twice, and both of them came at around 1200 or more, uh, whereas in every other ROM I've tested only came over within 1100, which is, well, not that great. I also really love playing Fuck You in the Sky. Now, uh, this is also one of the other ROMs other than Havoc that has access to HD graphics, but I don't really uh, advise you to turn on turns HD graphics and play. Uh, it will fluctuate quite drastically, so you may want to still turn down to balance graphics. I think that's the best option for you. And other nice little things like Screen calibration, uh, reading mode, uh, app locker, parallel apps, and of course, what, one of my favorites is Face Unlocked. Now, you know that Google has removed the Face Unlock on their AOSP ROMs, uh, but the OnePlus is the only, uh, the Oxygen OS is the only ROM that used other than MIUI to have Face Unlocked, which is surprisingly use useful and Throughout my time with it, it has been a joy to use. Uh, it recognizes really fast, it, um, it really helps me in a lot of certain conditions, but there is a catch to that and I will talk about that later. And of course, one of the uh, better features that I've that been through is App Locked. App Locked is something that not many manufacturers put in their ROMs. Not even AOSP, because um, maybe possibly because Google didn't prevent it yet, so they didn't actually find a way. But their app locking situation is so great. Now it does only allow fingerprint scanners, which uh, is a rant for later. But it's really useful when I uh, want to, you know, stay or keep my content away from other people and my friends and stuff like that. And I also really enjoy the OnePlus Slate font. Uh, OnePlus Slate is their font that is built in into the OS, and it actually works really well. The, the whole the aesthetic of the font is really sleek, really minimalistic, but it still doesn't support my country's language. So, you know, a lot of texts that I receive on my friends do look a little bit talk, uh, quirky, but that is but that's very small and that's more of a nitpick. Alright, so the last thing I want to talk about is battery life. Battery life is also one of the phone's, one of the ROM's strength point. As with every other ROM I've tested, alright? Other ROMs have tested around 7 to 8 hours of on screen time. This probably fails just the same. Uh, also around 7 to 8 hours on, of on screen time, which equals to around 1 and a half uh, days of uh, usage, of moderate usage. And, um, with the days that I play games, it usually ended around after a day, which uh, is actually a pretty impress uh, impressive number, I would say. And four hundred dollars phone, that is pretty impressive. All right, let's turn to the cons. And honestly, there were quite a lot of them, but I don't think that they will be uh, they will matter much to you. Let's start with the animations. Yes, it is smooth, it is fluid, but. The, the, the nature of the animation, the how, how it actually opens, is quite questionable. But I would say that it's, it's really dry and compared to something like uh, the iPhone's uh, gestures, it, is way, it, it, it falls way short of expectations for me. Uh, also, there are a few 
complaints that I have about like dog mode. You know, dog mode is the latest addition to Android 10, uh, and of course OnePlus does take that seriously as well. But there's something about the implementation of dog mode that has me to talk about it. First of all, um, there's no dog mode option in the quick settings, which is quite questionable. And then the second, if you use something like the auto dog mode app that I've been using, uh, like pretty much since, since Android 10 has come out, uh, you notice that it it will not some apps will not adapt to the dog mode. Um, the of course, namely OnePlus apps like OnePlus Settings, OnePlus Dial, Dialer, OnePlus Gallery, OnePlus Cam, and stuff like that. Uh, it will it will adopt the theme of this of the settings and not the dark mode of the of the Android 10, which is pretty quirky, I would say. But I don't think that really matters. Also, there are some minor glitches that I found within the OS. For example. If you set up the phone for the first time, I, I would recommend you to change the wallpaper. Uh, do not use the stock OnePlus 6 wallpaper, otherwise it will show it will have a bug where it will the screen will turn on as soon as you turn off the screen and also a bit of a wallpaper stretching when you uh, unlock and lock your phone. Uh, now let's talk to the cameras. Now uh, when you first set up the phone for the first time, there are going to be two camera apps built in, the OnePlus camera and the MIUI camera. And I will say none of them are actually usable. Uh, none of them are actually perfect. Uh, so I, I, would all, I would still recommend you to install Google Camera and have a life there because Google Camera not only does it, does it boost the quality, but it also boosts the stability of the camera app. Take in the OnePlus camera, I find it really hard uh, to to still sort of tolerate the fact that you know the camera app takes so long to process the photos, and that a few elements of the of the camera app will cause the, the app to crash. And if you use it like MIUI camera, it's gotta be the, it's it's gotta be the faster one. Uh, I, I gotta say that the MIUI camera is fastest, the fastest among the three camera apps I've used it, uh, I've tested. But it will cause some issues in the portrait mode. And so I guess the best bet is still the Google camera. It has all the HDR plus portrait mode, night sight stuff that you can imagine, and. It's still going to take some time to open and especially when you open the app, it's going to be a little laggy but that's a bit of a nitpicky thing. Alright, the next thing is the customization. Now remember how I said that uh, it has more features than Havoc OS? Well, Havoc OS sort of strike that back with customization. Um, the thing still lacks a few Customization that I could think of that I, I was really accustomed to with some other ASP ROMs. For example, you still can't change the quick settings grid, right? Some of you may like the 4x3, but some might like the 5x3 or the 3x3, three three, uh, in which case you may not, be, uh, may not be able to change it. And then lastly, I want to talk about sort of the issues that I found with uh, the small issues that I found with the Austin OS on, on the Note 5. The first being the OnePlus gestures. Um, I'm not talking about something like the three finger swipe down for screenshot or anything like that. I'm talking about the screen off gestures. You know, the, the, you know, the drawing the V, the, the letters to open certain apps, or even double tap to wait. Now there is a workaround to, to, to that, and that is to go into the gardener zone that is built in into the ROM, and go to the DQW, the uh, TQW zone, and then uh, tap, uh, switch on the force uh, on that will that will make double tap the way uh, work. Uh, but you know the overall the OnePlus gestures will not work. And of course the one the, the biggest bug that I have probably found is the lack of OK Google. Um, now that that hard work that make uh, trigger someone's phone, but um, basically it will not work. It will you can only trigger trigger using the the, the manual way you do it. You cannot really provoke it with your voice. Mm -hmm. And then lastly, the Bluetooth is not working well with calling and of course uh, some of the issues that I have talked about earlier like um, the screen might turn on after turning off 
when you use the soft copy for something like that. So that's basically my conclusion about Austin OS. I, in my opinion, like it does, it does seem like the cons sort of outweigh the pros, right? But those are just way too small to sort of to sort of affect the user experience. And if I would if I would recommend this or not, I would say this is the way to go. There, this is not like the best ROM in terms of. Uh, customization or even very light performance but it does strike back in a lot of ways like the oneplus experience the way that um, uh, the ROMs build the, 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 the you know the juice experience uh, is felt is really on top of there and um, I would say that uh, if you wanted to buy a oneplus phone but you don't want to but you're still uh, beating on the fence on whether whether Oxygen OS is going to work well for you, you can try out this ROM on the Cool Core Driven of 5 Pro and maybe uh, decide um, whether or not you, you like it or not. Anyways, thank you. And uh, if you like this video, hit the like button down below. If you love it, click, click the subscribe button and also uh, share this video to families and friends who are really who might be willing to try out our new Oxygen OS ROM. Anyways, thank you and goodbye.